So we've got some recruiting updates for you on uh, these three. We've been talking about these three a little bit. And obviously in the shadow of the Alabama, uh, like I'd say one of the top 10 games that I've watched the last decade, it was so good. Alabama, Georgia. I love this whole realignment in, in the, in this one aspect that you get these really interesting matchups during the season when normally you don't see them till the playoff. But the reason I say that is Andrew Olish and Ivan Taylor were there, um, and so I know that you've got updates on all three of these guys, Brady Hart uh, yeah. and the and the others. Absolutely. So uh, as we know, uh, that was a, if anyone watched that game, that was an amazing game to watch. Probably uh, to be a recruit at that game would probably be pretty impactful. But uh, good news, good news. So Andrew Olish and Ivan Taylor did go down to the Alabama Georgia game. Uh, Alabama's doing their best to get these guys to flip to them. Uh, word out of Alabama is that Andrew Olish actually looks to be very, very difficult to flip. Uh, the Alabama insiders feel that uh, Andrew Olish is, if they are going to flip him, it's going to be a very tough task. They think he is very strong in his commitment to Michigan. That's the word out of Alabama. And that's amazing. I mean, considering the way things are kind of trending offensively for Michigan uh, and the fact that uh, you know, Alabama's looking as dangerous as they are offensively and as good as they are. And they, that was an amazing game. The fact that they came out of that weekend and they feel that way about Andrew Olish is great news because Andrew Olish is a, is a impact uh, dynamic player. Uh, we're talking will be an NFL player one day. So excellent news on him. Ivan Taylor, the other player we will hit on. Very interesting also. So word is out of the weekend that Ivan Taylor – uh, wasn't very vocal. He was kind of, uh, you know, he's kind of kept to himself. He was just really in observation mode, it appears. And But the good news coming out of that weekend is he already rescheduled his next visit to Michigan, which is going to be the Michigan State game. So he's already looking to come back to Michigan. So that's fantastic news because one of the things that happens sometimes when you get a commit or when you have a kid in your class and he goes to another school for a visit, uh, they sometimes can shut things down for the for the school they're committed to and not come back and not give the school an opportunity to uh, respond or counter. And they are fully allowing Michigan uh, to be in this. Like they are not shutting Michigan out. This is fantastic news, especially because there's been some speculation that Ivan Taylor has a wandering eye a little bit because the way things are kind of trending with Michigan, uh, you know, because there's, I mean, there was some. There's been some parents who uh, Andrew Olish's parents, for one, who have been kind of open about some of the concern level with the the team right now. Uh, so you know things like that. You know there are there are there are recruits who look at the current state of the program uh, in terms of the way it's playing and, and things like that. Where yeah, like questions are arising uh, to some of them, and uh, you know, but it's also good that even after a, a weekend like that that both Ivan Taylor and Andrew Olish still look to be in good standing with Michigan and committed. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited and really happy to hear that news. I was kind of anticipating uh, not as positive outcome, you know, especially Ivan Taylor. Uh, but the good news is Ivan Taylor wants to come back from Michigan State game, so we'll be on that. That's a great, you know, top 100 safety. I think he's ranked number four in the nation in, in terms of safeties. Uh, so excellent. And then, the other major uh, recruit that was on Michigan's campus for the Minnesota game was Brady Hart. This is QB1 for 2026. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the best news out of all of it. He has reconfirmed and, and put any doubt out there that he is not interested in Michigan or he's not going to be a part of it. Brady Hart is 100% locked in after this weekend. He wants to be a part of Michigan. He wants to be the solution. He wants to help build the class. He wants to be a part of this program. I mean, this is, uh, I mean, this is, it's ideal. And if anyone has looked at uh, what Brady Hart's doing in high school ball right now, uh, it, it's, he's playing at an extremely elite level. Uh, he's averaging like 350 yards a game. Uh, I, I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head his touchdown interception ratio, but it's very good. Yeah, so uh, fantastic. Uh, so great news there. Brady Hart is going to definitely be our QB1 for 2026, which is huge to have that. I'm getting JJ vibes in the sense of just mentality, demeanor. Uh, 
he wants to be a leader. He wants to build a class. He wants to be a part of something uh, at Michigan that uh, that is long term and sustainable. So that's great to see. Uh, so that's all great news. And then we have a, a couple more, John. Yeah, um, before and that's all great. And uh, it what what really uh, st- stuck out to me about that. Um, yeah. I, I remember you and I were texting during the Alabama game, and I said, "Uh oh, yeah." <laughs> Um, uh, uh, Olash Taylor, at least one of them might be watching this and they're like, Hey, I want a piece. Um, so I'm very happy to hear that despite the the fact that they went, um, they are there. I mean, you know, some of these kids, they're, they, they get paid or they're getting free trips. They, they're enjoying their, their, the recruiting, uh, uh, perks. And I think they should, especially these top tier players, might might as well enjoy your free visits uh, while you can. Possibly paid. I don't know that to be. I just I'm just suddenly like these things happen in recruiting. Sometimes players will get money to come visit. I'm not saying this is the case. I have not had that confirmed, but I do know schools in the SEC play ball. Uh, it's possible that uh, that could be a, a reason, but it's also possible that it's not. It's I, I have nothing to confirm that to be true. Uh, and then uh, yep. our boy here, uh, Zach Spain, said, don't forget about the big wide receiver that Michigan's trying to flip for North Carolina. Don't yes. you worry. Yes, don't we're about worry. to get we there. Not. Yeah, we will uh, get there. Yes, real quick before we do that, uh, Ramez Sorry. did throw us a two. So uh, no design orgy runs to keep healthy coming soon. So maybe they're taking that J.J. McCarthy approach where they didn't call a lot of design runs for him to, uh, to keep him healthy. And Sharon Moore even said, he admitted it in the conference on, on Monday that they were doing that. So um, what do you think about that? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll say what I would like to see Orji do a slide a little bit. I'd like to see him protect his body. The way he plays concerns me long-term. Uh, he's listen, he's a big boy, uh, 235, 64. I mean, he's built like a linebacker, but uh, you know, you know, ask Cam Newton, you know, ask any, any quarterback who plays that style at physical uh, power running style that those types of quarterbacks play it, it'll catch up to you you know so like you know let's hope uh orgy just plays smarter uh and we'll see man i you know, i'm hoping uh you know we see another step uh against washington for Orgy. absolutely uh so thanks for mez for the super chat and let's get to it uh wide receiver interest a decommit and a potential flip target tj yes yes so uh Let's do LeBron Hill first. So LeBron Hill is uh, just decommitted from Purdue on the 30th of September. This is a wide receiver I would recommend uh, being aware of uh, because it appears the coaching staff is very interested. Sharon Moore is very interested in LeBron Hill. Now, uh, and so he's ranked in the 900s. Um, and and he's a, so he's a 6'4 wide receiver. He, he's an X-type. Uh, in my opinion though, you know, you know, we, we, uh, we don't sugarcoat, we keep it very honest. Uh, this is a player that I would category categorize as we are filling the class. Um, this is a fill the class type of player, um, a project raw. Um, I am not as high on this player. Uh, personally, you know, his highlight tape. Keegan like is. <laughs> there we go. Uh, his highlight tapes like a minute, seven seconds. And like, it's just, I don't know. I, to me, I'm not wowed. I'm not, you know, this isn't, um, you know, this isn't one of those players where I'm over the moon. This is uh, essentially, in my opinion, they are trying to fill the class and they're, and, and I told John this behind the scenes, they're kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Uh, now that's not entirely true. There, there are kids ranked way lower than a top 1000 commit. Uh, that's Jamar. That's Jamar. We're not, we're not there yet, John, but, uh, yeah, it's getting it ready. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh. So yeah. So that's where we are with LeBron Hill. Uh. Decommitted. There seems to be a lot of interest from Michigan. Sheryl Moore has been uh, in conversations with him. We'll see where it goes. Uh. You know. We'll see. Uh. Now the next one here, as our boy uh in in the comments mentioned earlier, uh Jamar Browder. So this is another X type wide receiver. He is currently committed to North Carolina, and there seems to be a lot of smoke that he is trending to Michigan. Now I am higher on Jamar Browden. I think I, Jamar, Jamar, uh, Browder, I'm sorry. Jamar Browder is better than LeBron Hill. Okay. Like that, that, that is not, uh, to be debated, but even so I'm still not 
like I am looking for a higher me personally. This is me. So obviously, you know, everyone has their approach to what they like to see in, in commits and prospects and all that. I would like to see a higher caliber athlete brought to Michigan. This type of player to me looks like a three-year project who could potentially make a production or make a, a contribution uh, in in his junior year. Uh, and then I, I don't foresee him being um, a player who is, I wouldn't categorize as dynamic or, uh, you know, to me, I will say this though. Let me just say this. So watching his, his hands though, his, he snatches the ball. So like his, we way he catches, his hand catching is, is crazy. But to me, his speed is a question. Uh, his release is a question to me. Uh, these, th- his acceleration is a question for me. The fact that he has a highlight tape, that's only a minute 27. <laughs> that's a question. a question. So if you have, if you play your entire season, and your highlight tape is a minute and twenty-seven seconds. You know, I mean, you're not, you're not. I mean, you know, so uh, yeah, you're not killing it. You know, and uh, so for me, uh, I'm not as high on these two, uh, but you know, Michigan's trying to land them. I do know they want to get four wide receivers in the class. We will see. Uh, you know, we'll see what comes of it. We'll see if uh, Sharon and Co are able to uh, land them. But uh, those are two players that I'm not as high on. But uh, the the recruiting segment uh, or the recruiting uh, topic with Olish, Taylor, and Hart, that's something to be excited about. Uh, Michigan's definitely going to keep working. They're not done. We'll see what they can do. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of uh, keeping working and uh, it, they're not done, how about Stephen Powers with the five bucks? Uh, also a member of the Those Who Stay Will Be Champions. And I made sure your name now appears here in the ticker. Apologies about that. Um, but uh, I heard Brady Hart might reclassify to the 2025 class. I haven't heard that yet. That's a very interesting if that happens. So I, I've heard it in, uh, you know, it's like a message board talk has discussed these things, but I think it's more in jest. Like, I think it's more in jest. I don't think it's a serious uh, consideration. I've not heard anything on a more on a credible level that this would happen. Uh, this is more hoping and wishing by the fan base because, I mean, I feel that if he did reclassify to 2025, um, no, I don't think he would start as a freshman, but I, I, I do think um, it'd be best for Michigan if that were the case, right? Uh, it would get him it would get him on the field quicker. I mean, I don't think he'd start as a freshman, though. Um, I think our answer for quarterback next year is in the portal. Uh, we'll see. Uh, there's no names yet on that. Hopefully Michigan's taking care of business and, and having some dinners with Mr. Portnoy. Uh, but... You know, so we'll see. Uh, but no, I have not heard any anything credible of that. I have seen some s- rumors uh, in message boards that I, I don't, I don't take uh, too credible. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, definitely, Mister Port- Portnoy with his one to three million dollar offer. Uh, let's hope that that can happen, and uh, and they can really go for a, a heavy hitter to at least compete with the with Jaden Davis and some of the others. Um, bring in, you know, they, they, uh, Jim Harbaugh always used to say iron sharpens iron. 